Welcome to Abraham Out of One Many, an engaging art exhibition brought to you by Interfaith Ministries for Greater Houston and curated by Caravan, an international arts nonprofit that is recognized as a leader in using the arts to further the global quest for a more harmonious future, both with each other and with the earth. Interfaith Ministries is Houston's oldest interfaith service organization. Dialogue, collaboration, and service have been at the heart of our work for over 50 years. Our programs fall into four areas. We are Texas's largest Meals on Wheels program and one of the top 10 largest Meals on Wheels programs in the country. We also have a strong refugee services resettlement program working with Episcopal Migration Ministries to help resettle refugees into the Houston area. Volunteer Houston connects individuals, groups, and companies with nonprofit agencies to transform the greater Houston community for good through volunteerism. And interfaith relations and community partnerships fosters understanding, respect, and engagement among people of all faiths. And IRCP is thrilled to be able to host this exhibit. Please visit www.imgh.org to learn more about us. Between April 20th and May 21st, we hosted Abraham out of one many, a virtual exhibit of 15 paintings by three celebrated artists from the Middle East. We had planned to host these paintings in person in our Brigitte and Bashar Kalai Plaza of Respect and Great Hall in April of 2020, but COVID derailed those plans. We were thrilled to work with Caravan to create a virtual gallery experience so that we were able to reschedule the exhibit a virtual experience allowed for a wide variety of accessible programs, including the program you're about to enjoy. We are grateful to the sponsors that made this event possible, especially our lead sponsors, Joni and David Andrews, Debbie and Floyd Kearns, Marion and Paul Cohns, and Carol and Frank Gruen. This exhibit came to us through the incredible work of Caravan. Its mission is based on the belief that the arts can be one of the most effective mediums to heal our world and to creatively foster peace, harmony, and wholeness and health in all its forms. Caravan originated out of an artistic bridge building initiative in Cairo, Egypt in 2009 that focused on addressing the then growing chasm of discord and misunderstanding between the peoples, cultures, and creeds of the Middle East and the West. The nomadic caravan theme comes out of the founding vision to encourage and facilitate those from diverse backgrounds and worldviews to journey together through the arts. We invite you to visit oncaravan.org to learn more. This exhibit, Abraham Out of One Many, is a timely artistic exploration of living harmoniously, inspired by Abraham, the common ancestor of three celebrated contemporary artists of Middle Eastern heritage from Muslim, Christian, and Jewish traditions. Today's event is a special one, as we host a virtual event that brings four leaders from the exhibit together for a dialogue on the importance of this project. We welcome Paul Gordon Chandler, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Wyoming, and founding president of Caravan, along with the three artists, Sinan Hussein, Kaysal Sindhi, and Shia Zule. From three time zones and two continents, let's join our conversation with the Reverend Dr. Tamla Wilson, a member of the Board of Interfaith Ministries and Vice Chair of our Interfaith Relations and Community Partnerships Committee, introducing our speakers. So to introduce the artists and moderate the conversation, let me now welcome the Right Reverend Paul Gordon Chandler, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Wyoming, and president and founder of Caravan. Thank you, thank you. And on behalf of Caravan, I wanna thank all of you for attending this special artist panel of the participating artists in this Abraham Out of One mini exhibition that is actually on tour right now throughout the United States, both virtually and physically, virtually as it is in Houston, uh, in partnership with uh, Interfaith Ministries for Greater Houston. This exhibition, I thought I'd give a little context for it before we introduce our various artists. This exhibition originally uh, originated out of an observance of the rise of anti-Semitism and increasing anti-Muslim sentiment in the West, and also with the prejudice and stereotyping and discrimination and even misrepresentation uh, where we saw was becoming more and more evident in today's climate. 
And of course, all of that can often lead to a dehumanizing of the other, whomever the other is, uh, whether in worldviews or words or actions, uh, whether related to color or faith or ethnicity, etc. And so this timely exhibition titled Abraham Out of One Mini is really an artistic response to today's climate uh, in all of that regard. Like never before, I think our day needs to be counteracted by creative initiatives that are based on our similarities and what we all hold in common. And so this exhibition really, in that sense, is a creative demonstration of dialogue. One of the things this exhibition does is it serves to remind us that in the midst of all the tensions and even polarization that exist, that Muslims, Christians, and Jews all have the same family heritage through our ancestor Abraham, or Ibrahim in Arabic, or Abraham in Hebrew. Abraham is certainly the most jointly beloved spiritual figure by all those faiths that call themselves monotheistic, Jews, Christians, Muslims, even Druze, and some of the other minority traditions uh, in the Middle East. All of them, of course, are considered the Abrahamic faiths, and they all see themselves as proud descendants of this one who we would say today is a southern Iraqi. And the followers of each of those traditions are, of course, referred to as children of Abraham. And these three faith traditions all see the figure of Abraham as a model of welcoming the stranger and embracing the other. And so in that way, Abraham can serve as a guide for all of us, regardless of what cultural, religious, or even non-religious uh, tradition or ethnicity uh, we come from. The exhibition focuses in on what we can learn from Abraham's story about living together more harmoniously. The title, of course, Abraham Out of One Many, plays off of that well-known Latin motto, which is on the pres U.S. presidential seal, E Pluribus Unum out of many, one. The exhibition premiered its 24-month global tour in Rome. It was then showcased in Paris, France, and then it went to Edinburgh, Scotland. And now it's on tour throughout the United States, both uh, physically and then virtually, of course, due to COVID. And as this important exhibition travels, it takes with it the fundamental message of intercultural and interreligious harmony focusing on how we can all live and work together harmoniously to jointly enhance our communities. And throughout the tour, uh, the art really is a catalyst for the development of a whole exciting schedule of programs and events of which this is one, to focus on greater understanding and dialogue and further education. And the foundation to this exhibition really is the belief that art can be a universal language that has the ability to dissolve the differences that divide us. There's no question that we have found that art can be one of the most effective mediums to enhance understanding, to bring about respect, to enable sharing, and to deepen friendship between those of different faiths and cultures. And if you will, it's a, in a sense, art helps us put ourselves in the other's shoes. So in this sense, looking through an artistic lens at Abraham's life, this exhibition has the primary objective of helping us see the other with fresh eyes. And so for this exhibition, we invited three celebrated Middle Eastern contemporary visual artists to participate from the faith traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They were each commissioned to produce five paintings that interpret Abraham's life for us today serving as a guide toward creating cultures of peace and of harmony and justice and healing, all as descendants of a shared heritage. The exhibition highlights five themes related to Abraham's life that have profound implications on how we can live together harmoniously as one family. Those five themes are these, living as a pilgrim, welcoming the stranger, sacrificial love, compassion, and friend of God. And we'll amplify a little bit later as we go through what they mean. What can Abraham teach us today from freeing our world from any sectarian strife? That's the question this exhibition attempts to answer. The three artists are these. 
Shai Azulay, a renowned contemporary Jewish artist from Israel. Kay Salcindi, an Iraqi artist from the Chaldean Assyrian Christian tradition, part of the ancient Nestorian tradition in the Middle East. And then Sanan Hussein, an Iraqi artist who is from Baghdad, currently living in Istanbul, who's from a Muslim background. And our criteria for selecting these three participating artists was really threefold. One, they had to be premier artists of international renown, and all three are award-winning artists and highly regarded in international art circles. Secondly, and more than anything else, uh, I, we wanted to see that their artwork together would flow seamlessly in a joint exhibition, that each's artistic approach would, in a sense, complement the others. And then much more profoundly than even those first two criteria is that they as artists embodied the spirit of this exhibition and really of Abraham in that regard of welcoming the stranger and embracing the other. Now for today's panel, we will ask each artist to share in some detail about one or two of their paintings in the exhibition. And then throughout it, including some conversation and dialogue, and feel free to ask your questions in the chat room as we go along. And we will do so in the order of their historical faith traditions. In other words, we will go with the, our Jewish artist first, and then Christian, and then Muslim. Shai Azoulay. Shai Azoulay is going to share about one of uh, one or two, actually, of his paintings in the exhibition that mean most to him and really that, in a way, signify his message to all of us related to this figure of Abraham. A little more detail about Shai. Shai studied at the Bezalel Academy of Art and Design, where he received both his BFA and MFA degrees. In his painting, he creates a narrative abundant with figures and scenes that radiate human war warmth and compassion and some irony as well, as you will see. His work ranges from drawing and painting between the sophisticated and the naive and between the omnipotent to the limited. Shai has held numerous solo exhibitions around the world, including of course in Israel, the Tel Aviv Museum, He's participated in the Freed's Art Fair, and then going all the way east to Tokyo, to the west of Rome, Paris, and the United States. He's a recipient of the Marasha Award from the Tel Aviv Museum of Art and the Moses Prize from the Jerusalem Artist House, and his works are in renowned collections around the world. Interestingly, just a little tidbit, Shai's family name, Azule is a prominent Moroccan Jewish name. For example, the, the current senior advisor to King Mohammed VI of, of Morocco is Andre Azoulay, whose daughter, Audrey Azoulay, is the current director general of UNESCO. So Shai's family uh, heritage comes out of Morocco and his father immigrated there uh, to Israel from, from Morocco in 1958. So carrying on that heritage, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it today, Shai often wears a traditional Moroccan hat, which is a beautiful blend actually of the two cultures. And Shai was with us for the opening of the exhibition in Paris, France. Shai Azoulay, welcome. It's wonderful to have you with us and I'm gonna turn it over to you. Shai, are you there? You're you're on mute, Shai. You're on mute. I'm there we go. Now, now I'm on. Hello, now everyone. we can hear you. Now we can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Good evening to everyone in Israel. Now it's uh, noon, I think, in the other places. Um, thank you for the opportunity for this everything to happen to to make painting that are connected to the big spiritual soul of Abraham, and from the other hand, to meet other artists that are coming from different uh, sources, but still the art is making the bridge to all of us. Um, actually, it's kind of a dream because I remember that the reason that I choose to start painting is because I, would, I couldn't speak so well. I mean that I was very shy. And, um, and it's amazing to see that paintings have no borders. They can 
they can fly, they can speak so many languages, and they can they can bring so many cultures in them. So I feel that uh, this is the privilege and the quality of painting in this sense to meet so many different um, opportunity with other artists and other projects. When Paul asked me to join this project, uh, I, 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 I felt that um, it's, it's big to react to Abraham. It's like very big and challenging. And uh, I was thinking that um, what will happen now? Because usually I'm the way that I'm my process in doing is very simple. I read something or I hear something or I dream something and I make them and they, be, they are becoming a painting. And uh, I was thinking now I had text and I had some kind of uh, I don't subtitles and I had to react to, to them. And I felt that uh, it, it, it took me a while to understand that I can do it. Paul knows that. And um, I f I'm very glad to have those images, these five images that we are going to speak on uh, maybe one or two of them. So um, can you can you please load one of those, uh, Greg? No. Oh yeah, this painting is. Um, Hold on, that's yours, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is not mine. Yeah, we stuck with this one. Um, sacrificial love. Greg, um, Greg, I was thinking. I, Greg, you need to do put the circle one on. Yes, that's that's what I had on. Yeah, so I there okay. Go. There we go. I I don't see the circle one. I see the other one. Ah, okay. We currently shy. We have this. We have the circle one up Delayed. now. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. So, uh, first of all, I was thinking of uh, Abraham that he was so like. It's amazing to think that Abraham was so open. He was so open to uh, to embrace everything and everyone in the circle, and I was thinking of a circle, energy circle between people that people are meeting and they are dancing together. Uh, it's a very cultural thing. Um, and I, I felt that kind of, I have to make the circle with so many colors, grid of different colors in them, because people are, uh, for me, they are like colors, different color, different people meeting together. Are, the combination is make, in making things uh, so special. And then, um, you can see Abraham above them, like uh, flying on the carpet. Uh, above them, the blessing of Abraham, that the, this 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 thing that uh, somebody is looking above you, is the blessing of everything. Um, yes, this is what I can uh, share and say about this painting. We can maybe see another image. Yeah. Shai, before you change, could you share a little bit about circle dancing within Jewish culture? Oh, usually uh, they are a very, um, it, it's common, not only in a Jewish uh, religious one, uh, it's, uh, it's common to have like circles, circles in dancing, uh, in folk music, Israeli folk music, uh, even, even in Hasidic, the Orthodox are doing it the same. This is kind of a very tied circle together. Is it, this is something that is really happening? Uh, common. It's 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 normal. Uh, but I think that people are dancing in circles everywhere. No, <laughs> maybe maybe it's only in my head. I don't know. And what? Why uh, do you have shy? Why do you have the uh, checkered background of different colors? The floor. I, yeah, I, I, I was saying that I made this grid of colors because I felt that uh, each color is um, is a language, is a culture, is a place of um, place that you are coming from. Uh, it's a language. It's a taste. It's food. So many things. So I, as a painter, I see them in colors. Like this, my mind is doing this grid of colors, and I was thinking of doing kind of a 
of a, of kind of a blank blanket, full blanket of uh, different colors that are combining together. Uh, this togetherness is Avram. It's like to to be able to meet so many different people and to to connect them all together and to make one of all of them. Okay. Thank you. Paul, well, Paul, can I just ask one follow-up? Please, follow please. Sh Shai, I have been off, I have been giving kind of virtual tours to groups. And so it's, this is a pleasure for me because I feel like I know you already because I have looked at your painting so many times. One of the things that I that I draw people's attention to are, are the details of the people. Um, they have, you know, different clothing, even different colored hair. When you were painting each of these individuals, did you have something in mind about each of them or were you just using colors and shapes? I think that it's like this privilege of doing painting from your head. You are letting all the demons coming out, all your uh, unconscious things coming out. You, you make figures that maybe you met them on the bus Maybe you uh, you saw them on the Facebook, or maybe you spoke with somebody, or you had it in your dreams. So you just you know, they are popping out out of you. Yeah. So it's and you are dressing them, and you are um, you are um, you are making their hair, and you are you, you think that you are there. You have to. I'm telling it to my usually to my my, my art students. You, when you are doing a painting, you have to be in the painting. You have to be part of the painting. If you won't do it, the painting will be, will, be, will, be, will be flat. You will be part of something that you, you won't touch no one. Yeah. Uh, Paul so Gordon. The thing that uh, maybe I answered your question. Yes. Greg, please feel free to ask the questions that are also in the, in the chat room. No. Yes, there is a, there is a, maybe we could do, uh, uh, Shai, this one as well. Again, many people have seen these paintings, but not the artists. So one question was asked was, how, how do you prepare yourself to be creative? The, the question is, how do you get into, we use in English, the creative zone? How do you position yourself to be creative what goes on this in your is, heart uh, or your mind or your in your, or your soul this is something that i would love to share because i really i mean i'm like a sportsman i i'm sleeping very early and i'm awaking very early like i'm awaking in like 4 a.m and i'm studying uh studying torah kabbalah a bit and then i'm um i'm going to speculate in nature for one hour in almost dark, and then I'm going to pray. And I feel that this, this thing is making me very clean when I'm coming to the studio. I'm, I'm getting to the studio at around 8.30 in the morning. And uh, I think that this thing is like keeping me very sharp and it's keeping me like my, I'm, I'm a channel. It's like the, the channel is open. It, my channel is open. I'm not disturbing images to go out of me. And, and uh, this is kind of a very simple, uh, secret, uh, secret way to, to be creative. You have to be clean. You have to be clean tool. The things will come out of you. Thank you. I, Thank you. Or, uh, if you could, that that would be a question I would love to. I think, and others would love for the other two artists. For each, that's a great idea. As well okay, along the way. Thank you. You want to go to your next painting? Shy. If if we have time, if not, uh, if we have time, we have time. Not, we, can... we have yeah, we okay. have time. There we go. Let's go to uh, to the other one. I love I love oh, the sorry. other one as well. The one with the hands. It yes. is up. Um, we have it up now. Yeah. So it's like an open hand. Yeah. There is a blessing in the morning that you are blessing. You should that you should open your hand to get the bless. When your hands are open. You're, you, you, the blessing is coming to you when your hands is closed nothing is coming to you so there is a praying usually when when you are praying uh, from the by from the from the from the torah you have to you have to react to the text you sometimes you have to react physically to the text so you're saying so it's just saying a sentence and then you have to open your hand to get the blessing and this painting is about this thing 
uh, I, I think that uh, you, have to, you, you have to choose in your life if your hands is closed or your hands are open. It's a choice. If they are closed, don't be surprised when you're not, you will not get the blessing or you not get all the energy. When, you're as, you're, when your hands are open, you should really, really, really um, expect uh, all the good or the things that will come to you. So I was thinking of those figures that are flying. They are like kind of an angels that are the good angels, even if they are in the dark. Uh, it's for the painting, but uh, they are good angels. They are flying away. They are bringing good. They are they are coming up and down. Um, it's very simple, actually, to open your hand. Open your hand, people. That's it. And Shai, you often have flying figures in your paintings. Can you give us a little yeah. background as to why? A, a flying figures, it's like uh, to be uh, high spiritually, uh, I, I don't know, glad, happy, uh, joyful. That they, sometimes you're so happy that you feel that you don't have balance, like you don't have uh, any uh, any weight on your, you can fly. You're like an astronaut. You can lose your, 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 your energy, it's like you can fly like a bird. And I feel that usually uh, when uh, you are very light, it can happen to you. And when I'm I, and when I'm doing flying figures in painting, painting is a very static thing. It's a very static thing. And when you are doing a flying figure, it's bringing some surprise into the painting. So I'm using these flying figures for me to be surprised. Maybe I want to fly as well. And of course, Shai, the background to this painting, the theme being a friend of God, is the idea of embracing all things, hence the open hands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To just get them to, to open your hand and to expect that uh, uh, some good things will come to you, just to open your hand. But it's not easy, you know. <laughs> it's easy to say. It's maybe easy to paint it. But it's not easy to to do it. We we are fighting so much between all of us. We are fighting for everything. It's not only religious. It's for this COVID brought to the world uh, a very simple thing that we see each other in our home, in our in, inside, and we understand that we can't fight all the time. We have to live. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I have to say, uh, Shai, just the first time I met you, I very much felt that spirit from the moment at uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport there in Paris. And, uh, and then, of course, seeing you with all of those at the opening there at the American Cathedral at Paris. So, so we're really grateful. And I would say that open-handedness uh, very much uh, is one that actually describes you, you know, so... Um, so I'm very grateful for that. Very I, I, I just had to add that it, it, it describes you as well because you are so okay. generous and okay. you are so uh, open and you are so uh, talented in the way that you are connecting and believing in things. So I'm, I'm, I'm my privilege. I'm lucky and uh, to share this thing with you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Shai. Very kind. Yeah. Let's move, we'll come back and we'll have some interaction later, but let's move to Case, Case El Cindy. Let me tell you a little bit about our friend Case. <clears throat> Case El Cindy was born in Baghdad in 1967. So he's uh, three years younger than I am. Uh, and he has a BS uh, degree in engineering, uh, obtained in 1989. Uh, as well as a BFA and an MFA uh, from the Academy of Fine Arts at Baghdad University. He left Baghdad and the first place that he went was Amman, Jordan, where he lived for four years. And while he was there, he taught art in, in, uh, in uh, architectural engineering at the University of Applied Science there in, uh, in Jordan, in Amman. And beginning really with his first major exhibition, which was titled Letters Don't Burn, which was about the burning actually of the Iraqi, the famous Iraqi library. Uh, he has exhibited around the world on themes related to humanity and culture and civilization and has won uh, numerous uh, distinguished awards. Uh, he currently lives in San Diego 
case comes from the Chaldean Christian heritage, which traces their, their own heritage back to the Nestorians, uh, which was a very ancient church that uh, was known to be um, very creative in its uh, assembling of other cultures, which is you can, for example, you can go to China today and see pagodas, Christian pagodas, uh, that are as a result of the Nestorian movement, uh, Christian movement all the way east. Uh, Case will actually be here in Wyoming later this week for the opening uh, of an exhibition here. He was with us uh, at our opening in Edinburgh, Scotland, when the exhibition was still there in uh, Europe, and he uh, attended the opening uh, and spoke at the opening in Omaha, Nebraska, and in Jacksonville, uh, Florida as well. So Case, it's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for everybody here. Uh, Paul, you are always amazing in the way that you express your thoughts. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm very delighted. Uh, <clears throat> uh, just like a, before I start, like when the epidemic happened, I realized how important is this project of Abraham because uh, when the virus of corona when it wants to get in any human being uh, the, the virus the virus will not ask you are you like christian or are you like uh, um, are you muslims or are you from any other faith the the virus will come right to you also like when it's rain the rain will not fall like uh, for specific people it will fall for everybody that's why when 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 Paul you when you like you approached me to be part of this exhibition, I was very um, enthusiastic uh, to 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 do so, and especially to try to to destroy those fossil stereotyping, um, antiquated stereotyping about the ideas that we have about each other, and in this way we'll be able to melt the iceberg that uh, keep us away from each other. And this will help us also, as I mentioned many times in other occasions, that instead of throwing stones at each other, let, let's us like collect these stones and build a bridge. Um, the, the exhibition of Abraham is one of the major like uh, 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 shows that I have uh, in, in my life because it has a lot of uh, humanitarian um, uh, humanitarian aspects. Here I wanted to uh, uh, share with you uh, like briefly about the sketches that I uh, I prepared. Uh, can I start like sharing a file please, Greg? Yes, I have stopped my share and we are ready for you. Okay. Uh, it's uh, supposed to be here. Uh, that I'll make sure our settings are um, set. Uh, let me try again. Okay. I have this one here. Okay. Anyways, I don't know why I can't see it here. It's uh, in my. Uh, computer, but I don't know if I'm allowed to share it here. Anyways, I will double check my settings here. I apologize. I think <laughs> I've... You should be able to. There it is. I think we've got success. Okay. And here, when I, when I uh, started to do the exhibition, um, I started to do many, many sketches, as you see here, like uh, an expressionist and also an abstract expressionist style to uh, portray Abraham. And in the way that this, port this portrait of Abraham can reflect the, the normal human being, especially the human being in our region. You see, for example, this, uh, the, the, this painting, this, is, this uh, painting, it's the origin of the major, one of the major paintings, number three, which is I titled, he is yours. And this case, you may, you may want to click on it so that we can see it in a larger way. I, I will, I will. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, I will. And can you see it now? I think it's large right now, right? No, no. No? 
How about now? It's oh, uh, it's working. Uh, not quite. Here, let's see. Stop sharing. Let's share another one here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's not. Greg, are we sharing screen again? Uh, let me see if he's. I have I it think... here. I have it here. Okay. okay. Let's see if this works. There we go. That looks uh, okay. much better. Yeah. And in and, 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 and this painting, I showed uh, Abraham as an elder people, like carrying his son Isaac. He's like sacrificing his son. I'm not showing the face of Abraham, as I'm saying that Abraham is rep representing like anyone else any one of us, because all of us are sacrificing something. <clears throat> With this big sacrifice, I, I, I painted this like short palm tree to show that this sacrifice is, is bigger than the palm tree, which is what, which is one of the main trees in this, uh, south of Iraq, as you see here. And I, I want to share the video again. Now, are you seeing the video or the picture? We're seeing the picture right now. Okay. I will stop here and start the video again because I want to talk about how I get. Uh, here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now you we, see the video, right? It looks like it's initiating. So let's see when we see it come up. Yes, we are ready for the video. Okay, and um, when I started this project, I wanted to like to add authenticity, originality to, 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 to this project. That's why I asked one of my friends living in here, as you see in the video, this is like south of Iraq, in this city, which is Ur, the origin of Abraham. As you see here, here is Zechariah of Ur, where mm -hmm. the this is the origin of Abraham, and now it's called Nasiriya. I asked one of my friends living in this area to go to find a shepherd, an elderly shepherd, asking him to give away his flock. The Iraqi people are very generous. Like when you ask somebody to give something away, he will be like more than happy to give this to you. And he was lucky, my friend, who was fortunate to find like one of the old shepherd in the desert of Nasiriya, the desert of war to uh, he was lucky to find someone who was like um, uh, he, he was welcoming to give like away his cloak his coat and i asked my friend to keep this cloak like as is with the dust with the odor of the sheep with uh, everything as dirty as it, as it is because i want to feel the sense or the smell of this area it was a very like um, hectic and uh, exhausted way to bring this flock from Nasiriya to Baghdad, from Baghdad to Amman, Jordan, and then to New York, and after that here in, uh, in, in San Diego. When I received this cloak um, here in California, I cut, I cut this cloak like to small pieces. As you will see right now, I, this is the cloak, you see? Uh, I cut it like to small pieces and I started to paste those pieces on my painting. As you see here, when I pasted this on the clothes and the garment of, of Abraham, um, uh, I told the story to the people who attended the exhibition. The people were um, thrilled and wanted to feel the smell and the spirit and the soul of Abraham. That's why many of them approached the painting and started to smell it. And of course, this, this was before Corona. <laughs> I don't think that somebody dared like to smell the painting right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, they started to smell it. And uh, you see like th these pieces, these pieces, but it is something maybe uh, uh, imaginable or maybe trans uh, maybe like uh, it's a kind of spiritual. I feel that the soul of Abraham is really there. It's really in the dust. It's really in, 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 in the air there. When I bring this piece and paste it on the canvas, 
I felt I really got his spirit to be there. That's why the people interacted with it. And this was my main intention to, uh, to get the, the, such interaction with the audience and with the crowd. And that was my, was my, my major intention to get the interaction of the people, all in my other artworks, like the video art, the installations, the conceptual arts. I, I get the audience involved in my artwork. Even they smell it, uh, they touch it, or sometimes uh, they, they, they uh, let's say, they taste it. I do all, all these things in the, the five senses of the human being with my artwork. Wonderful. Uh, yes. and. Um, Let's go back uh, to share the painting again here. And uh, you see here, this sacrifice, I believe that everybody of us has a duty and responsibility to like to sacrifice something in order to understand the other people. Because I believe that Islam, Christianity and Judaism are such like three rivers are pouring and meeting in a lagoon or in a, like a sea, let's say, or a gulf. When you go to that gulf, the water of that gulf, you will not be able to recognize or distinguish what this water is coming from, which, which river, you know? You don't know which channel <clears throat> because they are melting together. They are mixing together. And this is our, our target in this exhibition to show the people that there is no any differences between us, that we have to live harmoniously like between us. Um, and this painting, uh, this, this painting has this concept on it. The other painting, I will talk about it briefly, is, uh, let's stop sharing this one, and I will go to, let's see here. Mm -hmm. no. We have about two more minutes, Case, and then we'll... Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, and the other one I have here is uh, this one, and it's this one. Here also, as you see, like Abraham is embracing like three kids, and these kids are like a brother, you know? And with this long arm to show like his uh, uh, paternity, uh, to show his passion about his kids. And you see here is the piece of the cloth, of the garment, of the cloth that I pasted on, uh, on the painting. And uh, you see that uh, he has the passion of the father who is taking care of his kids. And this was uh, the painting about Sodom and Gomorrah in, in the old placement when Abraham wanted to protect his people if he find righteous people, righteous people in the city. And I feel all of us will be righteous, will be good people if we believe in each other and respect each other. And I, I believe this is <clears throat> our humanity message that we have to share with each other. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Case. Uh, Greg made an interesting comment that uh, from a distance, that last painting looks like a mountain in many ways. Yes. And so there's some symbolism in that as well, no question. Yes. And, uh, and I have to say uh, over and over again throughout the tour of this exhibition, people have loved smelling that cloak on, the, on all five paintings, you know, yes. and touching it. You know, yeah. God forbid, yeah. when, when, when we're not looking as well, yeah. you know, yeah. but uh, it has added another dimension. So thank you for that. I, I, I will tell you something very quick before I, uh, uh, like uh, one of our target also is to destroy the stereotypes that we have, you know, these stereotypes that we have. Like when I was teaching in the College of Engineering, architectural, architectural department, one of my students, I was in Amman, Jordan, you know, and I didn't visit the States yet. One of my students who like was raised here in New York, she asked me a question. She told me, sir, do you use camels in your transportation, you know, in Baghdad? And do you have really the flying carpet? 
you know, those stories from one night at night, you know? And she was believing that we use the cattle, uh, the, the camels and our transportation. And I was laughing, why do you think so? This is, this, she said that this is what the picture, which is the image that imprinted in my mind. And this is so funny because each of us has such a stereotype, has such an initial image of the other. <clears throat> you have just to think out of the box. If you have a cube, you have just to flip over the cube to see the other side of this cube because the cube has six faces, six surfaces. Just we have to see the other part. And then we will be able to, uh, to understand the other people, you know? Super. And everybody has such stereotype in its mind, like it's full of corrosion uh, and erosion. <clears throat> And then we are, we will be more able to be open minded to receive the other, and this yeah. is what we want to do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Case. I'm just a little disappointed because I was going to ask you to bring your camel this coming weekend to Wyoming, but uh, <laughs> obviously that's not going to happen. Thank you, Case. Thank you. Uh, our third artist here is Sanan Hussein. Sanan Hussein. I think, Sanan, you're the youngest of all of us among the three, born in 1977. And uh, of so much of his work relates to his Mesopotamian ancestors. He comes from Iraq as well, as does Case. And that vast civilization with its uh, really splendorous history. Uh, art started very young for Sanan at age 14. Uh, he started practicing and sketching portraits uh, of his family. His father was a musician and an artist and saw that kind of innate uh, inherent gift that he was given uh, for art and encouraged that. And then eventually, of course, that was not only self-studying, but eventually more formalized. And he obtained his B BFA uh, at the University of Fine Arts in Baghdad. And then uh, not long after graduation in 2004, he left Baghdad because of the war and a lot of the uh, sectarian violence uh, at that time. He ended up for a while in Kuwait and he eventually settled in the United States where he's actually now a US citizen. Uh, though he is in the exotic city of Istanbul as we speak, which is kind of his uh, second, uh, first or second home now in that way. He's participated in numerous exhibitions around the world. He just actually, one of a beautiful exhibition of his just opened in Beirut a few weeks ago. And I was envious that I couldn't be there for that opening. And he's collected by numerous Middle Eastern uh, and uh, art patrons, uh, including uh, a number from various royal families throughout the Middle East. Uh, Sanan comes from a Muslim background. Sanan spoke and was with us at the opening in Rome uh, that was in participation with members of the Vatican. And uh, it was a very special event. And Sanan, it's wonderful to have you with us today. Uh, you're on mute right now, but I'm going to turn it over to you and, uh, and ask you to share a little bit. Sanan, welcome. Sanan, you're on silence. You're on silence right now, Sanan. Nope, not quite. You're still still on mute. There we okay. go. There we okay, go. okay. Alan was silent. Alan was silent. Alan was silent. Thank you so much for everybody. Uh, just today, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, myself okay and i've and, and the, my painting okay uh, you know i come from iraq uh, i left iraq uh, uh, when i was uh, 27 okay and uh, i go to the jordan after that i leave to kuwait i uh, stay in the kuwait five years after that i uh, go to the uh, America. I stay in America uh, eight years. Uh, after that, I, I left America and now I am in Istanbul. Okay. Uh, just I come in from, uh, from Beirut. You know, I have exhibition there in Beirut, solo exhibition. <clears throat> in the same times, I have in other 
exhibition in Bahrain, okay, but a group exhibition. It is named, uh, uh, it is named Sharnaka. Uh, uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Exhibition of the Corona, specifically the Corona, Corona. Yes, okay. And in other, in other uh, not exhibition art fair, also in, uh, in Ankara, okay. Uh, um, and for the last month, you know, is the, um, a lot, uh, a lot of the um, work I have it, okay, and a lot of travel because I traveled to Ankara after that to Iraq after that to Beirut, uh, a lot of travel, okay. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I talking <clears throat> now. I talking about my painting, okay. You know, my style is very much is based on the flying separate of uh, on the people and. Uh, evil, okay. Uh, today I selected the painting uh, title sacrificial love to tell you more about it. Uh, it is the last painting in the booklet titled Abraham out of many. The reason why I feel this is the painting is the uh, dearest to my heart because this special event uh, of, of the story is considered to be the most emotional uh, and super, uh, spiritual part of the story of Abraham. And the only part of story we still carry on until, the, the, uh, until of this day. But each Abrahamic religion uh, carries on the event definitely also this very special event all Abrahamic religions carried on the tradition of sacrifice. Um, until this day to express a uh, thank to God, Allah, a praise and supplications also it, uh, it is no known for is the offering the sacrifice for the uh, purpose of uh, uh, charity filling, filling the poor. Uh, moreover, the importance of the event is carried in the message that is held uh, within the sacrifice uh, itself that matter how different we are. Uh, we come from the same father. We are uh, considered to the cousins by the blood and that our blood ties. Is why more old and important than what we think. That's great. Thank you, Sanan. Thanks for you. Now, Sanan, one thing that everybody says about your work yeah. is they usually look at it and they go, wow. <laughs> Thank you. And they also are wondering all of these various symbols that, of course, immediately one doesn't know exactly, you know, what you're trying to, what they represent. Um, like, for example, in this painting here, what intrigued me is if you look right in the center of it, there's a black glove. You see Abraham wearing that black glove, right? Do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about that, Sanan? Can you tell us what that black glove represents? The black, uh, uh, you know, black gloves, yes? Yes. Yeah. This uh, black uh, for, for the evil mm -hmm. act for is the killing the sun mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. just black uh, uh, okay but and and the, the other thing is the red color red gloves okay for mm -hmm. is the bloodshed and uh, urgency mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. So the blood, the red is for the blood. One of the things I find very interesting about all of your works, Sinan, uh, are the cones that are in there. And of course, here you've got three different cones. But uh, and I remember the first time talking to you about them, and yeah. you were sharing that symbolically they represent a sacred moment, a kind of a private moment, a special mm -hmm. moment, right? Yes, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, Brent, um, I am is not talking a lot about Islamic painting, just uh. Maybe I work a lot more than I talking, okay? Uh, you know, I, uh, for is the, um, um, not is the specific for is my painting for Abraham, uh, for another right. other painting. Right. I, uh, um, I make details about is the separate, okay? Or spiritual, uh, or souls. Okay, all of them I been start when I make like this style. Okay, I make is the uh, spirit. I make is the uh, um, souls. Okay, and fly in the world. Okay, uh, and when you, when you come and I'm talking me about is the Abraham, uh, I fall is this painting specific is the my my is the painting. Mm. I, I can't do that because mm. because is the uh, that that a lot details I feeling in my in my in my soul in my uh, yeah. In, in, oh, but he may have frozen there. Oh, he may have frozen. Okay. So all, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I think I think okay, we're having so, some connection so, issues. So now I think we just uh, had a small connection uh, issue, a problem, but now we can see you well again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now uh, I just I have a question. I would love to know from each of the three artists what interests you or intrigues you or what you're impressed with and the other two's artwork. So Shai, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Could you give me, uh, tell me what, a little bit your thoughts and what, what has fascinated you about Cases and Sinan's work? I think that the thing that I was um, more felt, it, there is a connection, I found a connection. I found the connection, the sense of the colors and the brush strokes between all of us. Even though the, the language is a bit uh, different, uh, sometimes it's more precise, sometimes the images are more sharp, but the brush strokes, something with color, it's very um, uh, Middle East. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if there is a um, sense of it, but I feel that the there is something very ballady, like something very basic in it, in a in, in a very good way. Um, and and I saw it on the painting. It's not a, a Flemish painting. It's a Middle East painting. Okay. And there is something that I love to see when I saw the exhibition. I felt that there is something that like we are making the same music in a bit. Maybe sometimes different tools. Maybe it's different. Uh, Sounds, but it's it's almost the same music. Like it's the, it's the same festival, and this is what I felt that um, it was great. And for, from the other hand, uh, another thing is that they are very talented, <laughs> uh, Sinan and Kosis, very talented, very much. I'm proud to uh, show with them. Mm. Thank you, Shai. <laughs> One thing that I remember when I first saw the exhibition was uh, when they all came together, some of the three, you know, the, the five, uh, you know, pillars of the three paintings each, some of those three, the colors were just natural, you know? So like the theme of the compassionate, if you look, there's quite a bit of orange in actually each of your pieces, which is quite interesting. So case- Because of the sun. 
Because <laughs> Case, you want to reflect just briefly, very briefly on Shai and Sinan. Yes, what I like in Shai and Sinan, both of them, I see that um, when I see their paintings, their artworks, I see that they are like depicting dreams. They are depicting uh, uh, visions, like especially, uh, I, I like the simplicity in shy paintings, you know, very simple. And it's like, it's like the, the dreams that I, when I, when I was like kid, how is my dreams are, you know? This is very innocent, uh, very, uh, very imaginary and very, uh, you know, very pure. This is what I like in, in shy paintings, very direct, uh, very honest uh, of these dreams. And in, in Sinan, uh, he's a very capable artist and he has very good uh, academic uh, style. He reminds me of uh, uh, the, the images of divine comedy of Dante, you know, <clears throat> that you dive in a lot of symbols and in a lot of uh, uh, figures that you open your mind for multiple layers to represent these uh, um, concepts and the symbolism. Um, and this is what I like, both of them, both of my like exhibition mates, they are painting, you know, dreams. And this is what I like. And I think the dream is the area where we can live and we can accomplish, you know, accomplish what the things that we are enabled to accomplish and achieve on the ground on the real life. That's beautiful. Thank you, Case. Thank you. Sunan, just a, a little bit about what you think about Shai and Case's work. Uh, both of work is the very, very, very good work. Okay, and I like is the both of work. Um, Case, he's a professional. Uh, he's a a very, very good artist, and he's a uh, he's make a lot thinking about is the painting. Um, <clears throat> more details, uh, he's about it, is the, uh, something different about me and about Shai, okay? Very different, very special, I like it, okay? Uh, he's, he's a make is the exactly Abraham, Abraham, exactly story. Uh, different me, different shy, okay? Because me is the, I put it, is the my painting, uh, I put it, is the my thinking or my thoughts in, in, in the painting, okay? But is the case? No, he's read a lot, uh, make sketch a lot, okay, about, about it. He's also talking with me before, before is the, before make any any is the painting talking with me and talking about is the Abraham, uh, his interest more, more about it uh, is more than me, okay. Uh, um, Shy, he's also make it like me make is the painting like his painting, okay. He's have also is the details, okay, and where. When you uh, see, um, when you saw the painting for Shai, you, uh, you saw a lot is the his religion, okay? Not is the uh, is the okay? His 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 make is the specific is the religion of or is the uh, 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 Christianity. Okay, right. you're hearing me now? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And both both uh, of them, the shy and the uh, case is makes the perfect and makes a very, very good job. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Now, I think it, our time is up pretty our much. Our time it? is up, sadly. Right. So I want to thank the three of you for participating in this from various parts around the world. Thank you. And some, some of you are in context right now where there's a lot of conflict and it's not easy to have actually gotten online. So we're grateful that you could all get online.
Yes. And it came together, even though we've got various Wi-Fi connections and all of that. So we're very, very grateful. And uh, it's wonderful to see the three of you all together in front of me on one screen. So very kind of you to give us this time together. And I'll turn it over to Greg. I'll just have a couple of closing remarks. Pardon us for going a little long, but just this is the first time I think the three of them have been live together since who, who knows when. So this was not only a artistic reunion, but also I think a family reunion. Um, there was one question that uh, we won't be able to answer, but I think it's a good closing question because it is really focuses on one of the intents of the of the of the exhibit. And the question is this, what role and commitment do you think religious communities, artists and men might have in creating a level playing field for girls and women to ensure all people have higher levels of education across the world, given the fact that more education women have the better that the better outcomes that people have. I think that's very, very important. I think it's also a question that indicates that this isn't just an artistic exercise, but this is as Reverend uh, Bishop Chandler mentioned, how art is a creative way to change the world. And we are grateful on behalf of Interfaith Ministries that to be able to host this exhibit and to see how this art has can, can change people's minds and hearts so that there can be change in the world. So on behalf of Interfaith Ministries, thank you to all of you for your time. Uh, Bishop Chandler, thank you to, to you and to Caravan for your work.